Hello students, how are you all? Hopefully you are having an amazing day. I am Muhammad Naeem Amin Bhatti and today we are going to discuss the play Pygmalion which was written by the very famous writer George Bernard Shaw. So we will discuss uh, the writer's uh, biography, the character analysis, the plot summary and themes of this play. So let's begin our today's lecture with the biography of George Bernard Shaw. He was born in 1856 and was died in 1950. Actually born in uh, Dublin and his father's uh, alcoholism and his family's poverty were great source of frustration to him. His schooling was uh, irregular and he cultivated the music visited art galleries and theatres as well and spent most of his time reading the literature. In 1876, he joined his mother in London and uh, never went back to Ireland for many years. Actually, he was a musician and a critic, a theatre critic, also uh, closely related to the Ibsen because of his views about the feminism and the modern perspectives. In 1925, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature due to his various achievements in the particular field of drama. We talk about his uh, uh, free thoughts and he was actually a literary critic, a socialist spokesman and leading figure in the 20th century theatre and he was a defender of the women's right. We can say him that he was a feminist or a Femininity is the major theme in his writings and his always equality and advocated the uh, rights of women and the equality of women. So he supported the violation of the private property, radical change in the voting system and campaign for the simplification of spellings and to reform the English alphabet. If we talk about his influence uh, uh, on Ibsen and uh, Ibsen's influence on him, Henrik Ibsen, he was a Norwegian playwright from 1828 to 1906, can be seen as equalizer for Mr. George Bernard Shaw because uh, he has given the moral propaganda which is always equal to anti-romantic theatre and Shaw shared Ibsen's ideas about the uh, stage as a powerful force for e awakening the people's social conscience. If we talk about the theatre of ideas, Shah wanted to force his audience to face the reality of unpleasant events. Shavian drama it refers us to George Bernard Shah is a type of politically and socially uh, committed drama also known as discussion plays and it was made popular by him and the other writers. Shah's plays uh, are consisting upon the two type of uh, uh, basically volumes. If we talk about the very first one is the play pleasant, the plays which have the pleasant ending, um, pleasant middle, pleasant start and the play unpleasant. The list is given here. You can see from the list that some of the plays were pleasant and some of the v v plays were uh, not so pleasant. Features of Shah's plays, they are the full of purpose and they are always discussion plays. There is a debate about the moral issues and social issues. There are the conflict of thoughts and ideas in uh, Shah's plays. There are the dialogue deliveries which are vigorous and brilliant, rich in wit, paradoxes, uh, nonsense talks and puns. There are the uh, dialect uh, of uh, the confrontation technique and also the characters are not always lifelike but they are always ever-changing characters. So if we talk about the character of Pygmalion, the very first uh, character is Eliza Doolittle which is also called the Liza. The second character is Mr. Henry Higgins who is the uh, professor of uh, phonetics, Colonel Pickering. He was uh, the friend of Mr. Henry Higgins, Mrs. Paris and Freddie Hill. So Lisa Doolittle is basically the protagonist of this play. She is poor, she wishes to be rich and happy. There is a social class discrimination system had been applied by Mr. George Bernard Shah. She is brought into a completely foreign environment and persuaded to change her personal characteristics. She is able to stay true to herself and also with the persons who are near and dear to her. 
If we talk about Mr. Henry Higgins, he's the antagonist of this play, and he tries to teach Aliza the pur purpose and the proper ways of society. He is the professor of phonetics and he tries to change Eliza's personality. His actions show that no one can change another's character, self-centered and pays no attention and feelings to her. And Colonel P Pickering is basically another researcher of the phonetics and friends of uh, Mr. Henry Higgins, tries to get Eliza and Higgins understand each other but he was failed at the end of the drama. Mr. Paris is uh, Mrs. Paris is Higgins' uh, housekeeper, and she has the motherly figure uh, to Aliza, and she is very kind to her. She tries to uh, reason with Higgins, and also Mr. Freddie Hill is the admirer of uh, Aliza Doolittle, an ideal image of a man to Aliza gives he hope to Aliza Doolittle. Aliza Doolittle, the character sketch of Aliza has been described uh, in above lines, but. Uh, now here I have mentioned some of her characteristics in a very deliberate and explanatory way and uh, also with the uh, things that uh, we have not discussed and understood at the uh, previous slides. And uh, if we talk about Professor Higgins, he is a brilliant person, educated one, talented and intellectual, he is a confirmed bachelor, a socially incompetent person. but. Uh, women hater and proud of his works and he is always a sort of person who gives Aliza Doolittle a feeling that she is incomplete in this society. So Pagmillion is a play by George Bernard Sheraton in 1912 and first stage in English in 1914. In 1938 the non-musical film was formed on Pagmillion and in 1964 the musical adaptation was also there and uh, these two movies has been uh, generated through this drama. So Pygmalion's plot overview is here in Act 1, the convent garden has been described in the London rainy evening. Professor Higgins is a professor of phonetics, is taking notes about the dialect spoken in that area and tries to get where everyone is from based to their manner of speech. Here he meets to the poor flower girl Eliza Doolittle whom he thinks that he could teach some of the morals of the society and speak so well in just three months that she could pass for a noble lady. We we'll talk about the act two, Higgins' laboratory, that is Pickering is stepping into his laboratory and betting with Higgins that he can't teach Aliza to speak so well that she passes as well the lady and an ambassador garden party in six months. He offered to pay for her lessons. Higgins likes the idea and tells his housekeeper, Mrs. Pierce, to wash uh, Aliza and dress her in new clothes and he will teach her to speak standard English so that no one will be able to tell her from the member of upper class or a member of lower class. In Act 3, a few months, uh, months later, Hagen's mother house Lisa is ready for her first appearance in the society. He, she has got the invitation for tea. People do not recognize her as the flower girl. Now everybody starts making small talks about the weather and Eliza makes a clumsy com comments about the uh, Higgins and Pickering's assures her that they take Aliza seriously and Higgins refers to Aliza merrily an experiment. You would talk about uh, Mr. Uh, Higgins, uh, why, uh, Mr. Higgins' uh, mother who is Mrs. Higgins. She has been described as Mrs. Higgins because Mr. Higgins was bachelor. So his mother's name has been described as Mrs. Higgins worries about what will happen to Aliza when the experiment is over. In Act 4, the several months later, Higgins has won his bet and he has taken Aliza to uh, the Embassy Bull in London where she mingled with the upper classes people and everyone thought that she was a foreign princess. The movement of Higgins trim and is, it is also the movement of Liza's self-awareness and she realizes that Higgins only interested in own success and has no consideration for her as a human being. She leaves his house by saying that 
she is actually not an object of experiment and bet. In Act 5, next day, Mrs. Higgins, the mother of Mr. Henry Higgins' house scene has been described. Mrs. Higgins uh, called to the Higgins and Pickering for how they have treated Eliza and reveals that Eliza is there. Pickering is uh, so nice to Eliza, but Higgins is angry and rude to her, and uh, he was ordering her to come back to his house. Eliza thanks Pickering for teaching her good manners. But she says to Higgins that she is a slave despite her expensive clothes. She then says that she can't have kindness for him and she will have her independence. She tells Higgins that she will become a teacher of phonetics and stealing everything she has learned from him uh, in uh, order to take his clients. Higgins is suddenly impressed by Eliza's strength and confidence but Eliza shows she has a will of her own and here is the open ending of this play we don't na uh, know about uh, if that uh, Eliza marries to Freddie or she goes to live with the Higgins if we talk about the titles allusions the Pygmalion has been described already that there was a statue of uh, the ideal women and a sculpture was made and it is a myth basically on and Galati awakes so that the artist can marry and be happy with his own creation. The literary archetypes are the relationship between the fable, uh, pin, between the fables and fairy tales. Basically, there are the some of the literary archetypes which has been described in this slide, and uh, uh, these were the creations of the writers and the sculpture. Uh, sculpture uh, making people or who were working on the different type of piece of writing either they are uh, the uh, writings or either they are the uh, type of statues or anything else we talk about the art and literature these are some of the pictures which describe the concept of Pygmalion that how the Pygmalion was formed actually here the statue maker uh, has been described as Professor Henry Higgin and the statue itself represents the Eliza Doolittle who was uh, uh, actually formed by Mr. Henry Higgin and Mr. Henry Higgin has made her a good lady. If we talk about the themes of uh, the uh, play Pygmalion, the very first theme is femininity and uh, the role of women in the society. Basically, Pygmalion's perfect women and the scriptures uh, talks about the feminism and the advocacy of women that the ideal noble lady of upper society and Shah's play is kind of fake uh, uh, on the role that Eliza must learn to play on the appearances. Pygmalion also shows how oppressive, unrealistic ideals of femininity can be attained these ideals Eliza had to be coached, disciplined and taught she has to present or to pretend to be someone other than who is really she is. Second theme is change or appearance versus reality. Actually Eliza Doolittle is something else but Henry Higgins wants her to be something else. She is from lower class but Henry Higgins wants her to be from upper class so that's why he teaches manner to her. We talk about uh, the theme of language, so phonetics and phoneticians are always referred towards the language. So there is a lack of communication and the language abilities in the characters which have to be improved by Professor Henry Higgins. But we can see that Professor Henry Higgins is actually not doing justice with his own ambitions. The class conflict is always there in George Bernard Shaw's uh, dramas because he represents the conflict of class, the upper class, lower class and the middle class in a very deliberate way and shows that how the class discrimination system is capturing our society. We talk about uh, uh, the Pygmalion and Cinderella. So both of these plays are uh, stories and plays are actually alike because uh, in Cinderella there are some of the elements which are present in Pygmalion and in Pygmalion there are some elements which has been described in this slide are present in Cinderella also. 
सो बोथ ऑफ दीज स्टोरीज आर प्रेटी मच रिलेटेबल टू ईच अदर तो आई थिंक दैट आवर टूडेज लेक्चर इज़ गोइंग टू एंड नाउ एंड टिल द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर इट्स गुड बाय फ्रॉम मी